All right, welcome back. So last video, we looked at how to record the journal entries relating to the purchase of inventory. Now we're going to move on to, now that we have that inventory and we look to sell it, what are the journal entries to record those sales? So here's a reminder of everything we did in the last, in the last um, video, journal entries to record the purchase purchases. Now let's move on to that sales side. All right. So let's say again. All right, so let's say we make a sale on account. So accounts receivable. Instead of service revenue, we said we're using a sales revenue. All right, that's your journal entry to record sale to customer on account. Now, when we sell merchandise though, there's two entries that always have to be made when you're selling. We've done the first one. The second one on the same day is cost of goods sold and inventory, right? Because we're selling goods we have to show our inventory balance decreasing for the goods that left in this happy customer's hands. All right, and we're increasing the cost of that good, selling that good. All right, so there's your journal entry. So whenever they ask you to record a sale of a product, you have two journal entries. All right, so that's your first one. Let me give this one an explanation to record cost of inventory sold. Other common entries we might see when we're engaged in that selling uh, side of our business. Well, remember how we had returns when we bought inventory and it was defective? Our customer, we don't want them to be sad, right? They might purchase something and realize, oh, it's actually, you know, defective. We don't want them to be sad. So we say, you know what? If it's, you know, we might have a policy saying if they're not happy, if it's defective, they can return it. So let's look at the journal entry to record a return. Okay, so this one was for the sale. Let me do it in a different color. Sale, we had to do two. For a return, we'll have to do two as well. All right, let's look at those accounts. Now, if you remember, when we started off, we had a few new accounts, new accounts. One of them was sales returns and allowances, normal to balance. We're going to use that one now. I'm going to abbreviate it, sales returns and allowances. This increases, and you're going to reduce the customer's account, right? If they're returning it, and they're not going to pay for it to record reduction in customer accounts. Now, if they return the inventory, then we get inventory back. Inventory is returned to us, and we ended up not selling it, so decrease the cost of it sold. All right, now, if, because remember this account is sales returns and allowances, if instead we had just granted them an allowance, you would just do the first entry and not the second one. Okay, so if you come across a problem where it says an allowance is granted to customer, you just do that first one. If it's a return, it's a return, you do both. Because in a return, you reduce the customer's account and you show the inventory coming back. Okay, so just look for the problem. You'll also know that you have to do two journal entries if they give you two separate amounts. All right, and then lastly, let's look at that payment. The customer paid on account. We hope someday they will pay off that account. And we remember from chapter three, when a customer pays off an account, we get cash and they are.
to show receipts of customer payments. Okay. But remember how there was discounts that were available when we were purchasing? We also might offer a discount to our customers, right? We want to keep them happy. So that might be the case. So let's say that there are some discount terms. So let's say terms 5, 10, net 40. We know how to read that. It means 5% if the customer pays in 10 days. So if that happens, this journal entry will change slightly. We will have one extra account. You've seen it before. It was in the new accounts we introduced. Sales discount. Normal debit balance. That's the account we will use here. Sales discount. Okay. Let's put some numbers to it. Um, all right. Let's say we did a sales of a uh, thousand. Do, do, do. And the cost to us was 700. The problem would give you this information, right? And then the customer returns, let's say, $200 worth. And maybe the cost to us for that was 140. So accounts receivable, they owe 1,000 minus what was returned, they owe 800. The discount, if we look at the terms, is 5%. 5% of the net, so 0.05 times the 800. $40 discount, they pay us cash of 760. Okay, view the illustration that I have in the next video to continue working on that example we started with Sock Stereo. All right, let it sink in, new accounts, new entries, but you guys have got it.